my best friend. Didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be setting up my June budget. So we're basically just going to be using my Erin Condren monthly planner. This is the 7 by 9 monthly planner. This is the older version. There's going to be a newer version coming out very soon. Um, but I personally like to do our budget for like January through December. The calendar year, it's just easier when it comes to taxes. I do do our family budget in this planner as well as my business budget. So like literally all of our financial finances, budgeting, all is done on paper. I know for some people that may seem crazy, but for me, it just makes the most sense. It's nice just having everything on paper. I am more of like a paper and pen type of person. I would really not follow up much if I was doing it in Excel or just some other electronic version. But of course, if you're watching this video, you probably also like to budget that way or you just like to kind of follow along. Either way, totally fine. I think with budgeting, the most important thing is just finding something that works for you. So if doing it electronically works, that's great. So like I said, I am using the Erin Condren monthly planner. I also have stickers for my Etsy shop. I do have my Etsy shop linked down below, but these are the stickers that I'll be using. This is my June budget kit. I'm obsessed with these like succulents and florals, so I am super excited to use it today. I'm gonna start by just putting down my monthly view because the monthly view is actually where I track all of my expenses. Again, if you have been here for a while, you know this. This is no new, you know, new, Thing to talk about but for anybody who may be new I just figured I'd mention that so I there's a lot of different ways that you can really track your expenses for me most of my expenses that are variable so that may like fluctuate from month to month I like to track in my monthly view just so that I can see patterns so for example like usually when we're doing really good on groceries like um, with meal planning, grocery shopping, all of that, it's because we're going grocery shopping earlier in the week. I found that like over time, if we go grocery shopping in the middle of the week, or even if we have a couple different grocery trips that we tend to overspend a little bit more. So it's just nice for me to be able to see everything in the monthly view. Again, helps with patterns, all of that fun stuff. So my monthly view is set up. I do have a key um, and I normally would use these colors for my expense tracking stickers for the month, but I do offer ones that match the monthly view. So I may use those this month. Not super sure just yet, but I figured I'd mention that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start setting up my budget. So I like to put my budget on this side and then my weekly check-in right next to it. That way, as I'm checking in every single week, I can, you know, compare what I'm spending to my budget. It just makes it easier that way. And also, I do a lot of writing in my weekly check-in and I don't like writing against the coil. So again, it's just kind of a preference there. But the nice thing about these monthly planners is that there's so many extra lined pages. So there's one, two, three, four five, six, seven. I mean, there's so many pages. So if you are needing lots of space for like extra budgets, like let's say if you like to do paycheck budgets, I feel like there's so much extra space in here that you could really do it. Right now, the way that I set mine up, I figured I'd mention this because it's always kind of fun to see what people do. Again, I'll have my budget here, my weekly check-in, my sinking funds, my transaction log for my sinking funds. And then on these two pages right after my sinking funds is where I put my budget together for my business. So here I'll have my budget for my business and then I'll have my expense tracking. I actually just kind of have a spending log for business because a lot of that stuff is just like sticker paper and ink, design, stuff like that. It's not anything that I really need to track in terms of like trends or anything like that. But I do do everything on paper. Again, it's just kind of my thing, so. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the little like shell for the budget. This month is gonna be, there's gonna be some different things going on in our budget. So it'll be kind of fun to go over all of those, lots of changes, and I'm gonna be having some things going on business-wise this month that are a little different. So I'm excited about that as well. I feel like it's always kind of fun when I have some, you know, different things going on. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that impacts our budget. Okay, and then 
I do want to go ahead and set up like the variable expenses and all of that. I do like to separate my expenses into variable and fixed expenses. Again, it's just easier because I know that my fixed expenses won't change. Um, they rarely change by month. So it's kind of like, okay, just copy and paste if that makes sense. But also my variable expenses are the ones that I can control, the ones that I need to kind of keep an eye on and make sure they don't go crazy. So yeah, that's my budget shell right there. And then in terms of income, if you guys watch my channel, you probably know this already, but I do have two sources of income that I put in. So the first, the first income is just my business income. So here in the income type, I'll just put in Sarah Marie. And then below it, I'll just put in miscellaneous. So I might actually move this down a little bit because I wanted, like it's kind of goofy the way that I put it down. So let's see, I may just move all this down a little bit. I just didn't want my, I didn't want to like leave not enough space. I think that's okay. Okay, so those are the two types of income that I currently have. My husband, if you're not familiar with our situation, he is a stay-at-home dad. So he will be home with the girls this summer. I have a five-year-old, well, five-and-a-half-year-old, and a one-and-a-half-year-old. So he'll be home with them this summer, and my five-and-a-half-year-old will start kindergarten in the fall, so that'll be super exciting. But, yeah, he is going to be busy. <laughs> okay, and then for variable expenses let's go ahead and just put in all of the different categories that we have and then we can get into the actual budget so the first one that we have here is electric then we have gas for our home so we do cook with our with gas and then of course if it's like a situation where we need heat then that's also with gas then we have cable and internet We have groceries, eating out, then we have gas for our cars, we have household, We have cash dividers. Then we have our sinking funds. We are, <laughs> okay, so here are some things that are just kind of a little goofy. Um, I wanted to have their own space for these just so that like it would be easier to track and all of that. But of course I could have put some of these things in household again. I just wanted to track it a little bit. So the um, next thing is going to be towels because we need like new bath towels. We also need like hand towels, a new bath mat, things like that. So I'm putting in a line item for towels so that in June we actually get them. Next is also going to be a carpet cleaner. So um, I mentioned this before, but we do have like our, all hardwood floors in our house. The only couple places that we don't are obviously the bathrooms. Um, but we do have throw rugs in every room, all of the bedrooms in the living room. And so with that, like over time, with you know spills and just like walking in the house and stuff like that we've had like stains and all of that on the rugs so there's a couple different options one you could wash you know you could clean them with a carpet cleaner we've um tried that before one second um okay so anyway we have tried to like spot clean before it just doesn't work that well i think like you just need something a little bit he more heavy duty for those types of rugs you could also like replace the rugs which we've done since we bought our house like four and a half years ago we've just kind of bought like hundred dollar rugs every year and so i just want to try out a rug 
cleaner and see. The one that I'm going to get is a little bit more expensive, but it does have like a part that is detachable so you can use it on like furniture and in the car if there's ever stains or anything like that. So again, I'm just kind of going to test it out, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then we'll just go back to replacing rugs as we need to. Again, we're not buying expensive rugs. I think they're usually like a hundred dollars. We get them from overstock and they're really just basic rugs, but I just thought like with kids and like how much kids throw up and just have accidents and spill things, it would just be nice to have something that could like help hopefully prolong the carpet. So that's one item. And then another thing that we're going to be adding is actually summer activities because like I said, my daughter now is no longer in preschool and we're thinking about signing her up for like some day camps through our park district. We were also thinking about signing her up for some activities. So we just wanna have some money set aside so that if we decide to do that, we can do it. Our park district actually allows you to sign up for like a day at a time. So we were thinking maybe we'll do like one or two days where she can go and go to the summer camp. And then the other days, Jason can go with the girls to the zoo or something like that. Jason's parents will also take Macy like one or two days so we just want to give her some options. We don't want to have her like in an activity all summer long because we wanted her, we still want her to be a kid and be able to do fun things like go to the pool and just chill. But we also know that she likes to be with other kids. So we're going to put some money aside for that. And then the last thing is I like to put an unbudgeted section so that if we have anything that we did not budget for, we have a place to kind of record that. I don't put money in that um, in that category, but again, it's kind of like a placeholder just in case we need it. Um, so that's kind of the last thing there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in my lines and then we can go through the amounts and my summer activities is a little bit over. So I'm going to have to make this work. I think I'll just kind of like leave a line so I don't mess that up. Not ideal, but it's okay. Okay, so go ahead and draw in our lines. The variable expenses are the ones that are kind of fun because you can kind of change them depending on what type of money you have flowing through your budget. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get into the amounts. So for our utilities, I feel like I mention this all the time, but if you're new, I want you to kind of know how we base some of these numbers on. So electric and gas and some of the utilities, I honestly just go and look at what our utilities were in the past and I add a little bit to it. So last year, if I'm looking at our electric, our electric was $200. And I think that might have just been like catching up for some of the other months. I honestly don't know. I feel like it was kind of a weird time. I don't think our electric bill should really be that much, but I kind of looked at some of the other months that were a little bit more on the normal side and they were right around like 130, 140. So I'm going to budget 150 for electric. And if it ends up being, you know, that $200 mark, then we'll see. I'm hoping it's not because I don't know what happened last year. Maybe it was just more of like a really warm June or something, but it hasn't been that hot here. So I don't know if I need to really budget that much, but we'll see. For reference, a $200 bill for us is kind of extreme. We have like an 1100 square foot house. So really it should not be that high. But again, I think a lot of it just had to do with the fact that it was really hot last summer, but we'll see. Gas should be on like an all time low. So I'm gonna budget $40 and that should be just fine. Cable and internet has gone up and I kind of told you guys about this in another budget video, but I called, I tried to see like if it would be cheaper to sign up for a new plan. And honestly, they just were not very cooperative at all. And then when I did some more research, I was like, okay, maybe I'll just get the internet and then do some apps or whatever. And honestly, it would be about the same anyway. So I think the thing is, as long as Jason wants sports, I think we're kind of stuck with it, which luckily we have the room in our budget to, you know, have cable and internet and have the things that he likes to watch. But if we ever needed to cut expenses, that is definitely one place where I'm just like, we could totally just completely remove $100 off of there. 
But again, we've talked about it, we've done some research, and honestly, that's just kind of what we're stuck with for now. For groceries, we're going to budget $500, and that is $125 per week, um, and I kind of base it off of the number of Mondays because we typically will go grocery shopping on Mondays. And then for eating out, we're going to do $250. This is a little bit more than what I normally do. Normally I would give us $200 per month. It's kind of been like a base 200. I don't really base it off of anything. Like it's not num not by like the number of Saturdays or anything like that. But I've just kind of seen recently that we've been just going to nicer places. Um, and I kind of want to do that anyway. Like I don't want to just getting be getting like fast food all the time when we're eating out. I'd rather like, you know, have something nicer and have better quality food. So anyway, I um I upped it to 250. We'll see how it works and, you know, we'll kind of adjust. Also, during the summer, it's just kind of nice to like be like at the pool and then, you know, just grab something quick and not have to worry about heading home early to cook dinner so that the kids can be in bed early. So, again, just something maybe for the summer that we'll up it a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Gas for our cars, we're going to budget $175. I think last month I actually bumped it up to $150, and I'm pretty sure that we are significantly over. So I'm going to do $175. As everyone probably knows, gas has been going up, so it's just something that, you know, we have to account for. And then for household, we're going to give ourselves $100. That should be just fine. Cash dividers is going to be $340. So cash dividers, and I used to split it out, but honestly, I'm like running out of space. So cash dividers will be mine and Jason's haircuts. So Jason's haircut, my eyebrows. It also includes my eyelash appointment and then our allowance. So Jason gets $100, I get $100, and then we have some extra money. So if Macy's helping us do chores around the house, we'll give her you know, a little money for helping out. It's not an allowance because she doesn't get it unless she helps out. And it's usually helping us do something that's not already required. So if she's helping me clean toilets or something like that, then she'll get some chore money. And then she can really do anything she wants with that chore money. She can go to Target and buy a toy. She can save it. Sometimes she'll say that she'll treat all of us to ice cream. So it's just kind of a fun way to let her have some money to do things, you know, do what she wants with it, but she does have to earn it. It's not just something that, you know, she can expect to get every single month. Um, then for our sinking funds, we are going to be putting $1,520 into our sinking funds. When I think of our sinking funds, I don't think of this as savings. And you guys will kind of hear a little bit about this towards the end of the video, but, um, we do do like a zero based budget. When I am putting together our budget, like our rough draft budget, I estimate what our income is going to be. I estimate what I think our expenses will be. And then at the very bottom, you see this thing here where it says potential savings. So everything left over goes into savings. Right now, we're really just kind of holding on to savings because we're not really sure what is next for us. Um, so we do have like a savings account that we're just kind of building up. And um, so yeah, we do basically do a zero based budget. So if one of our expenses, our variable expenses are higher, that means we're saving less, which is not ideal, but that's kind of the way that it works. Um, but for me, sinking funds are an expense because I think of that money as being spent as soon as we put it into that account. For me, I think like mentally, and emotionally when it comes to money, it just is easier for me to think of it as being spent already so that when I actually go and spend a bunch of money like on things that cost a lot, like when I see our six month car insurance, you know, being paid, that's eight or $900. Normally, if that was in our checking account, that would hurt. <laughs> that would hurt when that money came out just because again, you want to like build your savings and your checking account over time. And when you see a big blow to it, it's not fun. So now with a sinking fund account, when that balance goes down, I don't think anything of it because in my mind, I already kind of spent that money when I put it here. Um, so that's the way that I think of sinking funds. I'll do a whole new video tomorrow going over what our sinking funds are and what I'm adding to the sinking funds. But I just figured I'd kind of mention a little bit about that there. Towels, and I honestly have not done much research at all about towels. I did look on Target um, online, and their their towels were like 
$10, between $10 and $15. I know Costco has some. I'm gonna do some more research before I actually go out and buy them, but um, I'm going to budget $150 for them. I don't think by any means they're gonna cost this much, but again, I just wanted to make sure that it was covered just in case. And then the carpet cleaner, I believe is less than two, 50, but I'm going to budget 250 just again to be safe. I'm also going to get like the carpet cleaner that goes with it. So again, just trying to make sure there's a little wiggle room there. For summer activities, we're going to do $500. I don't think again that it's going to cost that much, but it's just nice to, you know, have that money set aside so that if we do decide to put her in a few extra days that it's not something that, you know, is hurting our budget. So I'm gonna go through and add these all up. I did do it on my rough draft, but I just want to make sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those up on my calculator. I did adjust our utilities when I looked at my little, um, when I looked to see, let's see, 4175, yeah. When I looked at our utilities for last year, so I just wanted to kind of double check. So that's gonna bring our total variable expenses to $4,175. So that is everything there. And then for our fixed expenses, these are the kind of boring ones that stay the same every single month. So the first thing that we have is our mortgage. Then we have Netflix. We have Amazon Prime. We have my life insurance. We have the girls 529 plans, so saving for their college. We have our retirement. And then we have our cell phones. So those are all of our fixed expenses. One thing that you guys don't see this time is Macy's preschool, thank goodness. <laughs> um, I am so bummed that school is over for Macy because she loves school so much and we loved her school. But I am glad because that was a very large expense that now we no longer have, so just kind of nice to have one less thing. So our mortgage is $1,615.27. Netflix is $17.99. Amazon Prime is $12.99. Life insurance is $42.55. The girls' 529 plans are $400. We have automatic payments, $200 for each girl that go out every month. Retirement, we put in $1,500. And then cell phones are going to be $80. Again, I'm just going to really quickly add up these amounts just to make sure. I didn't miss anything or I didn't miscalculate the last time that I did this and we have a total of $3,668.80 which is what I had three six six eight eighty Okay, so that is it. Okay, so that is it when it comes to our expenses. I'm really quickly just going to add in the bottom strip here, which is for our savings. So if this was like a normal thing and I wasn't always filming my budget, then what I would do is I'd put in my income, I would subtract my in my expenses from my income and that's what my potential savings would be. And again, right now we're kind of in this in-between stage where we're not paying off our mortgage because we don't plan on staying long term. And we're also like, you know, not sure what we're gonna do. Um, we we ultimately would love to purchase another house, but again, the market's crazy. We're not going to even deal with that right now. Um, so right now we're just kind of waiting. We're saving. So um, anything left over at the end of the month will go into savings. The last couple of months have been rough. Um, April was pretty rough. And then 
May was pretty rough as well. April was rough because I invested a lot of money into business stuff and I'm hoping that that soon will start to pay off. And then May was just bad because we had some plumbing issues. So I'm really hoping that June will look up and will, you know, be doing better, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, that is my June budget. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see it you know, getting set up. If you guys want to check out my sinking fund video, that will be up tomorrow. If you want to see how we did for May, check out the video on Thursday. I will be, you know, doing all the fun stuff, comparing our budget to what we actually spent. And let me tell you guys, May was tough. So that'll be kind of a fun video. And if you're struggling with budgeting, I think that will give you some motivation to, you know, stick it out because it's fun watching budget videos and sometimes I think you watch a budget video and you see someone doing great and you're like, oh, this is, you know, I can't relate to this at all. But let me tell you guys with the budgeting, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time now. I mean, I started budgeting when Macy was just over a year old. She's five. So I've been doing this for like maybe four and a half years now, budgeting for four and a half years, doing kind of the same setup and there have been months where we've dipped into our savings. There has been months where we put a ton of money into savings. And if you stick it out, you will have both. You're never going to have, you know, a row of amazing months or a whole year of amazing months, at least not in my experience. Um, but trust me, when you have the good months, it's definitely worth sticking it out during the tough months because the good months help you get through the tough months. <laughs> So anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this setup. Definitely check out some of my other budget videos coming in the next couple of days, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. You were my best friend. Didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends. I'll be in fools, drifting the deep space. So brave and so stupid, just like the moon.